Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Centara and Cone Health System Merger. A patient and employer win. So, it was recently reported here in the middle of August 2020 that the Centara Healthcare System, which is based in Norfolk, Virginia, and has 12 hospitals, is going to be merging or plans to move, merge with the Cone Health System in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, which has five hospitals. So obviously Centara is the much larger of the two health systems. And what is super interesting about this merger is that Centara also runs a big health plan. I mean, it's pretty unique among major healthcare systems in that it runs like a real health plan. It's called Optima and it has 900,000 members. It has almost a million members and they've been doing this for like 20 years. So Centara has a lot of health plan experience. Now, Cone also runs a health plan that's called Health Team. It's a Medicare Advantage plan. It's much smaller. It's only 15,000 lives. They've only been doing it for a few years. But the point is that they've already started moving in the health plan direction. And in the press releases, which I'll leave a link to in the show notes, they talk about how they're very like-minded in the form of running health plans, value-based care, and really being a model for future health systems across the country. So they're really thinking big here in terms of this vertically integrated health system that's collecting premium and delivering care. Now, what's interesting is that the impetus for this merger may have been, maybe, I'm just saying, that Centauri lost $770 million in 2020 um, because of COVID. Now, what does that tell us, right? We know that health insurers that are collecting premium are doing great, right? Because people are not receiving as much care. They're collecting the premium. They're not having to pay out, out as much in claims. What does that mean? That means that the premium they're collecting for these 900,000 folks and the decreased care that they're, that they're needing is not enough to make up for the vast majority of their patients who are fee for service. And as a result, they're hemorrhaging money. So if anything, if, if Centara wants to put itself in a better financial position, then it wants to collect more premium to hedge against the decreased patient volume risk. Okay, now, who, who's really gonna benefit here? Who's really gonna benefit is that this is going to be competition with Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina, specifically in the Greensboro area. Okay, so this is a huge win for employers and patients in the Greensboro area because Blue Cross has 77% market share in North Carolina. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's laughable. I mean, the fact that we let this happen, the fact that we let one company have 77% market, and they're not even the most. Right? I'll leave a link in the show notes to the top 10 most highly concentrated states. And Blue Cross dominates in places like Alabama and Michigan and Nebraska and South Carolina. So, like, this is, I mean, this is crazy. If you're a broker or an employer, this is awesome. The fact that Centara, with its health plan expertise, might come in to the Greensboro area and run a health plan that they can sell to employers in Greensboro is awesome. Okay, now. This is great for patients because it also aligns the incentives, right? In the typical fee-for-service mill in, again, let's say hospitals in North Carolina, then they are incentivized to do more, potentially more than they need to do. And with this type of model, model of vertical integration with plan and healthcare provider, it's essentially Kaiser, right? It's, it's establishing sort of a mini Kaiser along the eastern seaboard. All right. Now, what's also interesting is that Centaur is specifically targeting North Carolina. They could have merged with other hospital systems in Virginia. They could have gone north to Maryland, to Delaware, etc. They're in the Tidewater area, but they chose North Carolina, and that's interesting, right? Wouldn't it be interesting if other hospital systems also targeted hospitals in carrier-dominated states, just like North Carolina, that have very low competition for insurance carriers, because that would mean there would be an opportunity to gain market share and premium, right? Other states like Alabama, which has in north of 90% Blue Cross Blue Shield market concentration. Michigan has incredibly high Blue Cross Blue Shield market concentration. Iowa has incredibly high uh, market co uh, concentration as well and very low competition. So this is potentially a very exciting um, development and it will be interesting to see if this is only the first domino and if other health systems follow, specifically with this health plan 
hospital vertical integration and then expanding to another health system that doesn't have as much experience and then bringing that health plan experience to them. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.